Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Teardown. Today we're going to be tearing down the Pulsar X-Lite Crazy Light. Now the X-Lite Crazy Light is an interesting release from Pulsar, as while this mouse is lighter than the other X-Lite series mice, many aspects of this mouse are a downgrade from the other series, which makes this mouse a little odd, as it's kind of hard to recommend it considering the other X-Lite series mice, while they are heavier of course, do offer better performance in many ways. But despite this, this is one of, if not the lightest ergo mouse on the market, and many people will probably still purchase this mouse for its lighter weight, so I wanted to make a full teardown video to show you guys how to service this mouse if needed. But before we get started, you will need a couple tools. Firstly, having a precision set of screwdrivers will be very helpful. Now, all the screws inside the X-Lite Crazy Light are Phillips head screws. However, the top and base shells are anchored together quite strongly, and you will need a flathead bit to disconnect the shells here along with a pry tool. So having a kit with a lot of different bit sizes will be very helpful. Also, having something like a silicone repair mat or just something to keep track of your screws like an ice cube tray and to hold your mouse in place as you tear it down will be very helpful. Now, I use a silicone soldering mat, but you can use pretty much whatever you want. But once you have all your tools, you're ready to go ahead and tear down the Pulsar X Lite Crazy Light. So let's get right into it. Alright, now starting off, we're going to go ahead and flip the mouse over and we are going to disconnect these base access screws here. So go ahead and grab yourself a Phillips head bit, just like this one here. And we're going to disconnect these screws here, 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 and here. All right, and then once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and grab yourself a flathead bit. I'd recommend getting a smaller one like this, as well as a pry tool if you have one. This will also be very helpful, or you can just use your fingernail. And what you wanna do is you wanna take two of your fingers like this and make a bit of a claw, and you wanna put a bunch of pressure onto the back shell here. Now you can see there's this tiny little gap that starts to appear there. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the screwdriver into there, to pop the shell open, and then from there, you can take your fingernail or a pry tool and run it along the side of the shell to disconnect the top and base shells. Now, once the two shells are apart, don't rip them apart because there is a ribbon cable here for the side buttons, which you can disconnect by grabbing the top sides of this connector, pulling it up like this, and then gently pulling this cable out. And with that, that is how you disconnect the top and the base shells here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the base shell off to the side for later, and we'll focus on the top shell first. All right, now starting off with the top shell here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the side button PCB, which is quite easy to do, is all we have to do is remove a screw from here and a screw from here. And then once those screws are removed, just gently take your finger and pull up on this side of the PCB and pull up here, and it should loosen the PCB, and you can take out the scroll of PCB in one solid piece. Next, we have the main clicks here, which are anchored in by the typical anchoring screws here. So we'll go ahead and remove them by removing this screw here and this screw here. And then with those removed again, take your fingers and kind of pull up on the back of these clicks and they should pop off their standoffs with a little bit of pressure falling out of the shell just like this. And here are our main clicks. And then with the main clicks removed, the last thing we can do is we can remove the side buttons, which is quite easy to do is all they do is hang off on these little standoffs here. But there is a bit of an anchoring mechanism in the middle here that you have to remove. So what I recommend doing is taking your fingers, pressing them into the shell, and then you want to grab from the middle here and just kind of gently pull up on the corner to pull them out like that. So you kind of have to pull the whole thing out by bowing it in and then pulling up, but you can remove the side buttons in one solid piece, which is nice to see. And with that, that is everything for the top shell here for the X-Lite Crazy Light, a pretty uh, standard disassembly process for an Ergo mouse. But one thing I did want to know is that on the back here, you can see there's a little bit of a hook. And if we look on the back of the base shell, there is also a little bit of a hook structure here, which is why the rear shell is so difficult to get apart because it's actually hooked in. Now, thankfully this hook structure is much more durable than a lot of other hook structures we've seen before, so it's not going to get damaged, but it will make disconnecting these shells a little trickier, as I mentioned earlier. So just keep this in mind as you take your mouse apart. But that's everything for the top shell. We'll put this off to the side for now, and now we can focus on the base shell. All right, now for disassembly here, it's going to be a pretty standard process, but interestingly, one thing we can do that we can't normally do is that because the scroll wheel encoder is so tall, we can actually just pop the scroll wheel out of the encoder right away, which is actually quite handy. So you can pop this out. Now this may just fall off when you take off the top shell, so keep that in mind, but don't worry, it's very easy to reseed this, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our battery, which we can do by removing this one millimeter JST connector, but this one does have a clip on it, which actually is a nice attention to detail as it reduces the chances the JST plug coming undone. It's already pretty rare for this to happen, but having a clip is a nice thing to see, but it does make removing it a little trickier. So you kind of have to pull on the back of the clip while also pulling up on the top here 
to pop it off. Sorry, it's hard to show that, but there we can see the one millimeter JST connector there. Again, a little trickier to disconnect, but that is a good thing here. Now there is also a foam pad on top of the battery here, which if you look at the top shell, corresponds this little stabilizer here. You can actually see that this stabilizer actually indents into the battery here, which is designed to keep the battery in place, which is a nice attention to detail. But keep in mind, if you end up modding this battery out, as there is a larger cutout, as you can see in the back here, this may be a little too tall or too short, so you may have to remove this, which might slightly Slightly affect the mouse's balancing, but it's not a super big issue, but just keep that in mind. And then with the battery disconnected, we can go ahead and remove the PCB from the base shell here, and we can do so by removing a screw from here, 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 and here. Alrighty, and then with all those screws removed, we can gently remove the PCB from the shell here. But keep in mind that some of these plastic standoffs are a little tight on the PCB. So you might have to flip the shell over and gently push from the bottom there just to disconnect them. Again, don't put too much tension on the PCB as you can break it, but it should just pop out of the shell just like that. And the PCB is a pretty weight optimized PCB, actually very similar to the one we saw in the X2CL. Again, given the mouse's weight optimized nature, this is understandable, but a pretty nice PCB design here, which is cool to see. We'll put that off to the side for a moment. And lastly, again, we have the battery here, which as I mentioned earlier, does have the larger area here. So you could install a larger one if you wanted to, or even a smaller one. And there is a nice little channel here for the JST connector, which is great to see. Now you can remove the battery from here, but I'm not going to just because I would like my unit to be functional afterwards. But if you do want to remove the battery, you can just take a plastic pry tool and go in from the back and disconnect it. Just be very careful and make sure never to use anything pointed or metal as if you puncture these batteries, they are a fire hazard. All right, now that's everything for the base shell here. I'm going to put that off to the side. And next, let's go ahead and go back to our PCB and our side button PCB and talk about component layout and specs next. All right, starting off with the side button PCB, we have the pretty standard side button PCB. However, it is much longer than what we commonly see, but it is pretty weight optimized, which is nice to see. It does have a bit of a thin ribbon cable, which can make reconnecting them a little tricky. But since this is using a double-sided connector, if this cable does get damaged, if you want to mod in a longer one, it's very easy to do so. And having this connector here is nice to see, because again, if this cable does get damaged, it's easy to replace the cable and not the whole PCB. And for the side button switches, we have the same switch as we saw on the X2CL, being the TTC brown shell blue dot switch which are a little poppy in their actual waist weight, a little on the heavier side, but they do feel quite usable here on the x Light Crazy Light. Circling back to the main PCB, as I mentioned a moment ago, this is a very weight-optimized PCB, which is expected given the Crazy Light naming. And in the center here, we have the Pulsar XS1 sensor, which is just a renamed Pixar 3950, the DMT5QU SKU to be specific. We have our Nordic 52840 MCU here. We have the FE optical switches here for the main clicks, which are a very good switch, and I really do like them. We have this very unique pillar switch here, which I've never seen before. I assume this is a TTC switch, but it could be a kale one, but it's usually TTC as they normally make these very odd tall switches. But this is an interesting switch here to see on the x light. And lastly, we have the TTC 13 millimeter dustproof gold encoder, which is the weakest part of this mouse in my opinion, as this encoder is very loose and very uncontrollable in many ways. I would have loved to see Pulsar use the Pulsar blue encoder as they have, but unfortunately due to the mouse's ergonomic nature and taller height, the Pulsar blue encoder would have been too short. So unfortunately they weren't able to use the Pulsar blue encoder but I would have liked to see them kind of invest in making a taller one, but it is what it is. But that is the scroll wheel here on the Pulsar X Light Crazy Light. All right, and now that we've talked about component specs and PCB, let's go ahead and put all this off to the side for now, and let's talk about component weights next. Starting off with component weights, we'll start off with the top shell with everything removed, which collectively weighs 12.7 grams. Next, we have the base shell with the 250 milliamp hour battery still installed in it, which collectively weighs 11.5 grams, and the battery probably makes up around 4 to 6 grams of this weight. We have the two shell buttons, which collectively weigh 4.8 grams. The side buttons, which weigh a gram. The scroll wheel with its rubber texturing, which weighs 1.7 grams. The side button PCB with the ribbon cable still installed, which weighs a collective 1.2 grams. The main PCB PCB, which collectively weighs 8.2 grams, again being a more weight optimized PCB, and all the miscellaneous screws inside the crazy leg collectively weigh around 1 gram. Alrighty, now that we've talked all about component weights and specs, let's go ahead and start our reassembly process, and we're going to start off with the base shell first. Now, the base shell here is going to be a pretty straightforward reinstallation process, as there wasn't really too much to remove here. Firstly, we're going to go ahead and grab our PCB. Now, normally I would say reinstall the scroll wheel, but because the scroll wheel is so loosely installed, I'm actually going to say install it afterwards, and we're going to anchor this PCB in first. Now, you can do this by basically lining up these little holes here with the standoffs on the base shell here, and you can just line it up on top, and once it's aligned, 
gently press it in place to click it onto its standoffs. And once that's done, you can go ahead and grab your screwdriver and re-anchor the anchoring screws, which go here, 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 and here. But keep in mind that because the base shell is a little thinner than we've seen on other mice, you can slightly warp the base. So make sure to screw these in so you feel a little bit of feedback and don't over tension the screws as you can potentially warp the X like crazy lights base by over tensioning these. All right, and then once all those screws are anchored in, I'd recommend taking your mouse and putting it on a flat, hard surface, not a rubber mat like this one, and just check to see if the base is warped and has any unevenness to it. If it does, likely you've over-tensioned one of these screws, specifically these edge ones, so re-tension them and just make sure, again, not to over-tension them as you could potentially cause the base to warp a little bit. After that, we can go ahead and reconnect our battery, which is very easy to do, as all we need to do is take this JSD connector, rotate it where the clip is facing upwards, and align it into its little plug there, and once it's kind of seated in place, just take to your fingernails, clip it into place just like that. And then you can take the cable and feed it into its little cable trough here just like that. Now, once the battery is connected, I'd recommend taking your mouse, flipping it over, and just make sure this power light turns on and just double check to make sure the mouse is functional. If the mouse doesn't work and this light doesn't turn on, most likely this JST plug isn't in all the way. So disconnect it, reconnect it all the way to make sure it works. And then once you've verified the mouse turns on, you can go ahead and turn it back off again. And we can go ahead to reinstalling the scroll wheel, which is very easy as well. As all we need to do is take the thinner end of this scroll wheel, the one here, as you can see the thicker ends on this side, and you wanna take that and put it into the hole in this encoder. You can just gently drop it into place, anchor it in, and push it in just like that. And then once installed, just make sure the scroll wheel still scrolls, and make sure you can scroll wheel click, and if it does, you are good to go. And with that, that's everything for the base shell here, a very easy reassembly process as expected. We'll put that off to the side for now, and now let's focus on the top shell reassembly. Starting off, the first thing we're going to do to reassemble the top shell is re-anchor the main clicks as they're going to be the trickiest part of this. Now on the main clicks, obviously keep in mind that they are of different heights, so make sure not to install the wrong click on the wrong side of the shell. But secondly, inside the click structure, you can see there are these little hollow stabilizers here. Now you pay attention to the bottom part here because this hollow bottom part has to go over these little stabilizers of the top shell, which are here and here. So keep this in mind as you do have to put them into the shell a little uniquely. So you have to put them into the bottom shell like this, but then also put them in in a way where the stabilizer is going to go proper and once you push it into the shell you can see it just sits in place like that and you can press it down with your thumb just like that. Now once it's installed take your thumb hold it down and just double check the click has a natural rebound to it just like that which is exactly what we want and then you can go ahead and take the anchoring screw and anchor this into place. But as always when it comes to main click screws it's very important that you do not over tension this screw just like the screws we showed on the motherboard here if you over tension them you could damage the main click so screw this in until you feel a little bit of feedback from the screw and do not over tension them under any circumstances. Now, once it's installed, flip the mouse over again and just double check to make sure your clicks have that natural buoyancy to them. If your clicks are stuck up like this and aren't moving too much, you've over tensioned the click and if they're stuck down like this, they've likely been under tensioned. So again, just make sure your clicks have a natural buoyancy just like this. Once that click is installed, we can do the same process for the next one where we go in through the bottom shell, aligning it over, pushing it on top of its stabilizer, clicking it into place just like that. Press it down with your thumb to actuate it. Make sure the button has a natural buoyancy just like that. And then you can take your anchoring screw again and anchor in the next click. And once installed, again, just check to make sure the click has a natural buoyancy, which it does, which means they've been properly installed. Another thing I wanted to know is that Pulsar does factory lube these stabilizers here and here, and that, of course, will wear over time. So if you notice your main click's getting a little scratchy, it's most likely these stabilizers making contact with the side shell rubbing against it. So if you notice that happening, just re-lube these two stabilizers here and here. Now with the main clicks installed, next up, let's go ahead and re-anchor our side buttons, which is pretty easy to do. What we're going to do is we're going to anchor one part of it into the side shell here, and then we're going to roughly put them into place and then we're going to kind of bend this whole thing over and clip it into that side there because this middle stabilizer point anchoring the buttons in place and just make sure the buttons have a little bit of buoyancy to them which they do make sure these are fully anchored so you want these little plastic pieces to be flush with their standoffs on both sides and then once that's done we can take our side button pcb we can install it onto its standoffs on the shell there and there and then we can take our anchoring screws and re-anchor the side button pcb and once that's done, just go ahead and flip your shell over and make sure your side buttons still have a click to them. 
which both of mine do. If they don't click, it's most likely because this PCB hasn't been anchored properly. So just reseed and test the buttons and make sure they are still functional. All right, and with that, that's everything for the top shell reassembly here. Again, a very easy process. Now let's go ahead and reconnect the top of the base shells and finish off our teardown here. All right, now to reconnect the top and the base shells, this is going to be a pretty straightforward process. Now, what you have to do is you have to take this ribbon cable and pull it off to the side, and then you wanna kind of rest the top shell just like this into the shell, kind of making it a little bit of a weird structure like this. And then look at this ribbon connector and pull up the black top of this connector, opening it up, and see the little slot towards the back there? This ribbon cable has to go into that, which can be a little difficult to do as the cable is a little short, but if you put the shells in together properly, you should be able to do this relatively easily, where you just line it up and get it roughly into place just like that. Push it all the way down. Make sure that the blue is kind of even with the PCB like that. You want it to look roughly linear like that. And then once it's installed, you can clip down the sides of this connector. Again, double check to make sure it's seated properly. And then once that's done, go ahead and turn your mouse back on again and retest the entire mouse and also make sure that the side buttons work, of course. Now the main click you have to manually actuate because they're not connected yet, but just make sure everything is working before you put the shells together because it's much easier to test it now than take the mouse apart again. Once you've verified everything is functional, go ahead and turn your mouse back off again. And now we can reconnect the top of the base shells, which we can do by taking the top of the mouse and you want to gently line up the shells so they look like this click those into place, and then go along the rest of the shell connecting everything. You'll hear a large click there. Run your thumb along the side of the shell to make sure everything made proper contact. And then just double check to make sure your main clicks are still functioning. Make sure your scroll wheel still works. Make sure your side buttons still work, which they all do. There's nothing misaligned. And once that's done, we can go ahead and re-anchor the base screws, which go here, 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 and here. And then once everything is installed, just go ahead and double check your mouse is sitting completely flat on a hard surface, which it is. And then you can go ahead and reinstall your preferred set of skates or aftermarket skates as the channels are quite big and they're quite thin. So the mouse is compatible with pretty much every single type of aftermarket skate. And with that, that concludes our teardown of the Pulsar X Lite Crazy Light. Overall, while the performance of this mouse and many other aspects of it are a little underwhelming in my opinion, specifically the scroll wheel and of course the battery life of the Crazy Light, this mouse does maintain the same great serviceability we saw in the X2CL, which is great to see. So if you want to address the subpar battery life, you can mod in a larger battery, and you could also mod in a better scroll wheel encoder if you wanted to, which will of course affect the overall weight of the mouse, which does make it kind of pointless to do so, as you'd be better off buying one of the regular versions of the x Lite V3 or V4. But there is a lot of modding potential here with the x Lite, specifically with the shell and the PCB. There is a lot you can do to this mouse, but as I said in my full review, this isn't still a mouse I'd recommend getting as you are much better off just getting one of the regular versions of the x Lite. But if you want to learn more about the x Lite Crazy Lite, you can go ahead and check out my full in-depth review of this mouse, which I posted a little while ago. So go check that out if you want to learn more. But with that, that's everything for today's episode of Teardown. Thank you very much for watching. Big thank you again to Pulsar for sending over the x Lite Crazy Lite for review. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you to our channel members who make what I do here on the channel possible. Possible. If you enjoyed the teardown video, be sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss future ones. And if you'd like to support what I do here on the channel with these in-depth reviews and of course the teardown project, consider becoming a channel member as that is one of the best ways to directly support my efforts here on the channel. And channel members get early access to all upcoming content and of course make more videos like this one possible. So thanks again to our current members and any new members for your ongoing support. But with that, that's everything for today's episode of Teardown and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Peace.